My girlfriend Amanda and I recently took the next step and moved into a spacious apartment on the outskirts of downtown. We lived on a shady looking street and Amanda joked that we were among the block's first gentrifiers, but still it felt like home. I grew up in a small, suffocating town and living in the big city was a nice change. The sounds of police sirens and broken glass would bother most people, but they lulled me to sleep after a long day at work. The idiosyncrasies of our block never bothered me. But the strangest thing about our new neighborhood was the diner on the corner. It was called Hamburger Sally's, and it was located in the basement of an abandoned apartment building. We thought that it was a front. I mean, it had to be. And we never saw anybody leave or enter the restaurant, even though it claimed to be open 24-7. I sometimes joked about going to check it out, but since Amanda's a vegetarian, I doubted a place called Hamburger Sally's had many options for her. I would walk past the diner on my way home from work and wonder if this would be the day that I finally took the plunge and ordered dinner. But something would always prevent me from doing so. I remember standing on the top of the steps leading into the restaurant one day and feeling this odd sensation that I shouldn't go in. Again, the restaurant was empty, but I smelled fried food cooking on the grill and the open sign softly hummed. Yet for some reason, I felt an inexplicable dread that something terrible would happen to me if I went inside. I hurried back home to Amanda and I ate leftovers instead. One night, we had our new friends, Victor and Claudia, over for drinks. They were about our age and moved into the building shortly before we did. And Claudia and Amanda also worked for the same firm, but never put two and two together. I had a feeling that we would become close. And we were talking about restaurants that we wanted to try when Amanda brought up Hamburger Sally's, and Claudia's eyes grew wide. Yes, what is that place? Victor and I always pass by it, but we've never gone in it. Victor took a swig of his old-fashioned. I think it's used to launder money. That's what we said. Amanda yelled with excitement. I don't think I know anyone who's been there. I paused my line cutting to chime in and tell everyone about my recent experience with the restaurant. How creepy, Victor responded. And that makes me want to go even more now. Plus, it's a hole-in-the-wall diner, so the food is probably really good, added Claudia. I'll even try something with meat, Amanda exclaimed with a giggle. Well, I guess it's settled then, I said. We plan to do a bar crawl with mutual friends the following weekend. Hamburger Sally's would be the perfect spot for some late-night munchies. I passed it by every evening during the week and still felt the same uneasiness from before. Just what the heck was going on in there? Friday evening came and we began our bar crawl. I was in a foul mood because I had to finish a last minute report for my boss assigned and I couldn't indulge until the final stop. Victor and Claudia were party animals and I had some catching up to do. I was on my fourth shot of tequila when the lights in the pub flashed to let us know that it was time to come and close out our tabs. Onward to Sally's, Victor exclaimed, wearing a sea captain's hat that he stole from the tiki bar that we had previously visited. We made it back to the train home and soon found ourselves on our block. The restaurant's faded neon sign flickered, a joint unlike any other. Victor stumbled down the steps and almost face planted into the door, and Claudio rushed to help him. They quickly went inside while Claudia gently scolded Victor. I stood at the top of the steps, still hesitant to go in. My stomach churned and I could feel my heart begin to pound. I felt like I would be sick, but I chalked it up to the cheap liquor that I had just consumed. Pat, Amanda said, already halfway down the steps. Come on, slowpoke. She then descended the stairs and disappeared. I closed my eyes, took a deep breath, and entered the restaurant. I was greeted by a familiar warmth and the sounds of Amanda laughing at one of Victor's jokes. The diner looked a little neglected with chipped black and white linoleum tile and flickering box lights. 
There were a couple of posters of hot rods from the 1950s and a few paintings of picturesque landscapes. An ancient jukebox struggled to play In the Mood by Glenn Miller. An elderly gentleman sat at the bar with his back turned to us, methodically taking sips of coffee, while the cigarette slowly burned in an adjacent ashtray. Guess this place does have customers, I thought to myself. Is there a waiter in this place? Victor shouted before Claudia shushed him. The sound of oil hitting the grill grew louder, and the man at the table dinged the bell on the bar top. There was a brief silence before a voice yelled from behind the counter. Come in. A middle-aged woman in a stereotypical diner smock appeared and sauntered over to her table. She pulled out an old pen and notepad and began to take her order. What can I uh, get you to drink? She asked. I noticed that there was something weird about the cadence in her voice. It was like she was having trouble speaking. I found it odd that she was wearing a mask since it seemed like she was trying to catch her breath. Our server stood motionless, waiting for one of us to say something. Uh, Victor finally spoke. Are you the hamburger Sally? He slurred and then belched. The waitress tilted her head to look at Victor. No, Sally is out today. My name is Dawn. She then pointed to the name tag on her apron. Some coffee would be nice, Claudia said politely before glaring at Victor. A coffee for me as well, please, Amanda said while still looking down at her menu. And for you? Don asked me. I turned to look at her and a feeling of anxiousness immediately shot through my brain. It was their eyes, I don't know how to describe them, but they looked out of place. One of Dawn's eyes was off to the side while the other was slightly off center. It was like she was wearing a wrinkled mask that didn't quite fit her face. And the color. I had never seen eyes that black before. Um, water's fine, I guess. I said quickly turning my head away from the waitress. She lingered briefly at her table and then disappeared behind the counter. While everybody debated their favorite bar of the evening... I tried to get another look at our server. The elderly man hadn't moved since he rang the bell and continued to sip his coffee. I squinted my eyes to check if I could see into the kitchen, but I only saw a shadowy silhouette moving around in the back. I was startled by a loud bang from the kitchen and saw Don appear with everybody's drinks on a safe tray. May I take your order? She asked. Victor gulped down his coffee with both hands. I'll have the chicken fried steak with mashed potatoes and fried okra. Claudia rolled her eyes. Can I get the tuna melt? Really, guys? Amanda asked. We're at Hamburger Sally's and you don't get a burger. She shook her head. I'll have the old-fashioned cheeseburger. Oh, and can I also get a vanilla milkshake? I felt Dawn's eyes shift over to me. Um, I guess I'll have the same. Thank you. We'll get that right out. Don then headed back to the counter. I leaned in to whisper. And did y'all notice something off about our waitress? The other three looked at me quizzically. Not really, Claudia said. Though I'm worried that she may have emphysema or something. What should we be looking for? Victor asked. I don't know. Just something seems off about her. Honestly, there's something totally bizarre about this place. Yeah, it's an old diner, Amanda said firmly. Are you doing all right? Should I grab a penadolo from my purse? You're probably still stressed from all the work that you had to do today. I waved her off. No, I'm fine, you're right. Just need to calm down. Victor smirked and then pulled out two nips of Jack Daniels. I've got something better than a beta blocker. I snatched them from his hands and shot them down my throat while the others cheered me on at the booth. We made some small talk before Dawn brought out our food. And it was decent. Not totally out of the world, but perfectly acceptable for a rundown diner that never sleeps. Amanda, however, wasn't looking too hot. 
I think I'm going to be sick, she said, clutching her stomach. Well, this is your first time trying meat in like five years, I reminded her. Amanda shot daggers at me with her eyes. Nah, sorry, y'all. I think I need to run home real quick. I'll be back. She then bolted from our booth and disappeared out into the night. We ordered another cup of coffee to wait for Amanda, but I deduced that she had fallen asleep after hurling. Now let's pick up the check. This one's on me, I said, anxious to get home. Oh, garçon, Victor yelled, snapping his fingers. Don reappeared and glided to her table. What can I help you with? We're ready for the check, I said nervously, not trying to make eye contact with the waitress. Oh, the check, yes. Don went back to the kitchen. I excused myself to hit the can before we settled our bill. The bathroom was more like a tiny closet and while doing my business, I saw a box labeled Hamburger Sally's sitting under the sink. Curious, I opened the box and found a dusty old binder with family photos and a journal filled with scientific scribbles that I didn't recognize. The picture looked like it was from the 1980s. It showed a man and a woman holding a young toddler wearing a bow in front of the restaurant. The back of the photo was labeled, Bill, Don, and Sally, Grand Opening 1986. So that's where the name came from. I also found it interesting that Don was still working here, even though she had to have probably been in her 70s. Plus, she didn't look that old. I quickly flipped through the rest of the album. Most of the photos were of Sally at various milestones in her life, but there were a few of Bill tinkering with something in his garage. Looked like some sort of robot or android, but the pictures were too smudged to make out anything comprehensible. It looks like Bill was a man of many talents, I thought to myself. The notebook in the binder was also faded. I couldn't make out most of the writing, but inside one of the pages was an old patent application titled Synthetic Autonomous Learning Intelligence Bot, or Sally. It must have been the robot that Bill was working on. The patent application was filled with black lines and redacted labels, and the only thing legible was the giant red stamp at the front that said, Denied. Stapled to the patent application was a cease and desist letter from the Department of Defense. At the back of the binder was a torn piece of paper with a note written in pen. Today, Sally made a friend. Just what the heck was going on here? Oh, Pat, did you fall in the toilet? I heard Victor yell. I pulled my pants up and hurried out of the restroom, finally glad to leave the diner. I slid back into the booth. Let's get the heck out of here. I pulled some cash out of my wallet and put it on the receipt, not even bothering to check the price. I don't need any change, I said to Don. Thank you, dear. No problem. Hope you and Bill have a good night, I said without thinking. Who's Bill? Hiccuped Victor. I froze in my tracks and time seemed to stop. I felt Don's black eyes hone in on me again. Her neck tilted slowly until her ears were almost to her shoulder. She placed the cash back on the table and clicked her spindly fingers. Who the heck is Bill, Pat? Victor asked again. Don turned to Victor. Would you like to meet Sally now? Victor chuckled nervously. Um, yeah, sure. We would love to thank her for a great dinner. The room fell silent. I could only hear my heart pounding in my ears. I saw the man at the counter slowly rise, his face still turned away from us. The music at the jukebox grew slower and deeper, and then I realized that it had been playing the same song on loop. The lights began to flicker even faster and Claudia and Victor looked scared for the first time this evening. Several thumping noises came from behind the counter, and the walls in the back began to shake. What the? Victor started to say. And then darkness. A sound like metal hunks scraping together, followed by a deafening shriek that shot through the room. I instinctively grabbed my backpack and hustled out of the booth but tripped on something squishy 
and fell face first onto the floor. Another inhuman howl pierced my ears and I hustled it to get back to my feet. The lights came back on. Dark red blood gushed on the black and white tile below me and seeped into my shoes. I whipped around and in horror saw an enormous black humanoid machine throw Claudia's lifeless body on the ground with ease. Victor sat slumped over in the booth, only his face was missing. The man from the counter stood over Claudia's body with a kitchen knife, and then he knelt by her face. I did the only thing that I could do. I screamed. The three beings whooped around to face me. Dawn was no longer wearing her mask, and the skin where her mouth was supposed to be hung in tatters, revealing nothing but black metal. The man from behind the counter was now wearing Victor's face. The other humanoid, which I deduced to be Sally, had a chrome-plated black face. On top of its head was a dusty red bow. I ran, tumbling from behind the counter, feeling the androids hot on my tail. I leaped into the diner's giant refrigerator door and locked it from the inside with a crowbar. I'm still here now, shivering and surrounded by frozen meat that's been here for who knows how long. Surprisingly, the machines haven't found me and I wonder if the freezer is concealing my heat signatures. Every now and then, I'll hear a muffled voice cry out from the restaurant. Where are you? The voice will say, it sounds like Claudia's but more disembodied and tortured. Papa isn't mad. Come out to play. That one sounds like Victor's but totally devoid of his free-spirited charm. But there is one that I don't recognize and it startles me every time that I hear it. Sally needs a new face. The androids are either going to find me or I'm going to freeze to death. I think I prefer the latter. Amanda should be waking up soon and I pray to God that she doesn't come looking for us. Whatever these things are, I'm pretty sure they're trying to escape. To my friends, if you happen to run into me, no, that it isn't.